what we're going to do today is we're going to just explore these calculators. So if you'll follow along with me, yes, I gave you two pieces of paper, and yes, one of them is just a recopy of the classwork assignment you did last class with the vocabulary. That is yours to keep, so put that away. That's just because I think it's super helpful for you to learn. A lot of us did really well in that classwork assignment, so now you have one to take home. But on this paper, that looks like what I'm showing you on the board, we're gonna go over the buttons that you need to know for this calculator to use it to its full advantage. Some of them is gonna be like, well, duh, but we're still gonna write it down. What we're gonna do in all of these little boxes is we're gonna write down the button that we press. So if we wanted to turn the calculator on, what button is that? What does it say? On. Yeah, way easy. So on is the on button. How do we turn them off? It's the same button, but the word off above it is what color? Blue. Blue. So before we press on again, what do we have to press? Mm -hmm. See, here's, here's why we're going over this. If anything, if ever you want to type something that's in the blue part, do you see that blue button up in the upper left-hand corner that says second? That's what you're going to press first. So we press second, and then we press the button that's called on because right above it is the word off, which is what we actually want. So we press blue button and on, and it's gonna turn your calculator off. Now obviously, if you just put the lid on it and put it back, it does turn off eventually, but that's why my batteries die all the time. I need you to actually turn it off when you're done with it. Yes, please? Okay, moving on. Mode, pretty obvious. What button do you press for mode? It literally says mode. Okay, here's why you would want mode. In this class, we are going to measure some things in degrees. But your calculator starts off measuring them in radians. So mode is going to be helpful for us because we need to be able to change our calculator from what's called radian mode to degree mode. We are mostly going to be using degrees in this class. So everybody press mode right now. On that mode screen, your calculator might be off, by the way, because we just turned it off. So turn it on. You have a whole bunch of options. Do you see one that says radians and degrees? What's highlighted right now? Radians. Can you scroll down to radians and then go over to where it says degrees and then press enter? Do you see that the highlight changes to degrees? If you're trying to change your calculator from radian to degrees, that's how you do it. Because every time you reset your calculator, it goes back to radian mode. So when we get to the point where we calculate using degrees, you have to remember how to do that every time. That's probably not something we've ever done before. Uh, the next button is the alpha button. Don't overthink it. What does the alpha button say on it? Alpha. It is your green button. It's going to help us get to a lot of shortcuts. Okay, alpha is like, you know, on the computer to do a shortcut, you would know like control S is save, control Z is undo. Alpha is like your control button. It's your shortcut button. Uh, some more things. This is to help you problem solve. If you think that your screen is the contrast is not good and you want to brighten or darken your screen, the thing that you do to brighten your screen is press second and then the down button. It's going to take down the contrast of your screen, which most of them are already as bright as possible, so that doesn't really matter. But if you were trying to darken your screen, I don't know really why you would, you would press second and up, and over and over again, press that button combination, and it's gonna change the contrast of your screen. That's really helpful for if you get a calculator and it's not working. Check the darkness and the brightness, because sometimes if it turns up or turns down, you can't see anything. I don't think you'll really ever use that because most of the time when you get my calculators, they're on the correct brightness, but just in case, that's a problem-solving technique. Now we're gonna call the home screen the screen where you can type in numbers with nothing else on it. If you're ever in a menu and you wanna go back to the home screen, you're gonna wanna quit. Does anybody see the word quit on their calculator somewhere? Yeah, it's above what button? Mode. So we know we're going to have to press the mode button, but since that word quit is blue and it is above the word mode, what do we press before mode? Second. So if uh, that's one super important. So let's put a little star next to this guy. If we ever are like on a menu that we want to get out of, we press second mode to quit and go back to the home screen. Does anyone know the button progression for fixing a calculator, like resetting it? 
I'm gonna ask it again and point this direction. What is the buttons that you press to fix it? Second plus seven, one, two. You don't need to know why that is, but second, the plus sign, and then the numbers seven, one, and two are gonna get you through the screens to reset the calculator. It will say like RAM reset. If your calculator is ever broken, or you're like, ooh, I messed up and I deleted something I shouldn't have, you press second plus seven, one, two, and it goes back, it like refreshes the screen. Everything goes back to normal loading. That does mean that it's back in radians, so you'd have to change it to degrees. Uh, this next one's super easy. Anytime you want to press go or press enter or equals, you press the button that says enter, which is the one that we've, I'm pretty sure we're familiar with that one. But anytime you want to select yes or go, that's the enter button. To retype the previous entry, there's actually two options, but the way I'm going to tell you to write it down is to press second and then enter. If you look above the word enter, what does it say right above it in blue? Entry. That means it's going to retype the thing you typed right before this. So if you typed a really long equation and then you realize, oh darn, I put a two and it's supposed to be a five. Instead of retyping the whole thing, you can press second enter and it will highlight and bring back up your equation so you can go change a number. To uh, bring up your previous answer, which we will probably use in this class a couple times, you're going to press second and you're going to press negative. Negative is a minus sign in parentheses. What is above the minus sign in parentheses? What is that word? What does it say? It's not really a word. It's three letters. A and S. That's shorthand for answer which means it's going to recall your previous answer. So if you calculate something and you get a really, really ugly decimal and you don't want to round that number and you want to use that number again, you can press second minus sign or negative to input that answer. Uh, to get a fancy fraction, do we remember that one? To get a fancy fraction, you're going to press alpha. That's my shortcut. You're going to press y equals because above y equals is a little option called f1. That's function 1. And that first option, option 1, you're going to choose. So you just have to press enter after that. So alpha y equals enter brings up the fancy fraction. Everybody do alpha y equals enter right now, just so you can see what I mean by fancy fraction. See how it makes that, so alpha is green button, y equals in the gray, gray buttons at the top, and then enter. Great. So see how that's the fancy fraction? We like to use that one. It's going to automatically reduce your fraction and keep it in fraction form for you. We like fractions. But let's say you get a decimal and you want to change it to a fraction. The buttons you would press is math and then option one because it says frac. So for example, in your calculator right now, I want you to type 0 0.25 in the home screen. And then I want you to press math one. It's called math frac. After you do math frac, it changes it to a fraction. What is that fraction? One over four. One over four. So if you do 0 0.25 math one and then press enter, I guess we should say enter after this. It's going to go ahead and change that to a fraction. OK. A couple more things about these calculators. There is a difference between negative and subtraction on these calculators. On Desmos, there was no difference, so it didn't matter for you to know. But there 1,000% is a difference on these calculators. If you're trying to use a negative sign, like make a number negative 5, you press the button with the parentheses around it. It is littler when you type it, then a minus sign. The subtraction or the minus sign is just the regular minus sign along the side in the gray buttons. We have to know and utilize the difference between those so we get the right answer. Your calculator will be like error if you did it wrong. Now if we graph, which we won't necessarily do as much in geometry, but this is a year you may take the SAT or the TSI, and you're going to need to know these things. So for graphing, to type in the equation, you just press regular y equals. You can beep, 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 type in the equation there. 
To graph it and see what it looks like, you have to press the graph button. Unlike Desmos that does it automatically, you have to change screens to the graph screen. Uh, we're going to fill in these boxes and then I'm going to show you what each of these mean because I don't think we've used these before. Uh, but you know how on like Desmos, if your parabola or whatever you're graphing was kind of like off screen, you could just scroll down. These calculators are not touch screen. There's no scroll. So the idea of scrolling comes from the window button. We're going to change the window by pressing the window button. It's up at the top in the gray buttons on your calculator. I will show you what this means in a second. But if we just wanted to massively zoom in or zoom out, that's on the zoom screen. I prefer changing the window personally than just zooming. But that's a mathematician's choice. If we wanted to trace, which is a bunch of options to do on our graph, all of those options are on literally the button that's called trace, and we'll explore those in a second. I just wanted to get all of those things written down before I show you on a calculator, excuse me, what all of these things actually do. So give me a second to pull it up. Now, before we really get to our practice problems, I do want to go over just some things on Desmos because I know we know Desmos. Hopefully you've used it before. There's some things that we may not know it has the capabilities to do. Did you know it has something called projector mode? which bolds the lines. I prefer using my Desmos in projector mode. To get there, you're gonna go to the little gear shift that's in the top corner, and two options come up that has an A and then has a really, really bold big A. If you select this A with the really, really bold, it's going to bold your graph. Now, in my class, you will be using the calculator while you're here, but if you go home and you have Desmos, that's why I'm still showing you this. It's like, let's say I had y equal to x, and I wanted it to be bigger and bolder. I go to the little wrench, and then I say, oh, big and bold, please. Look at how big and bold it is. So this is before, this is after, before, after. We like this, this looks nice. That's just a personal choice for me. When you plot a point, you just type it in. That's pretty easy. When you graph a line, you just type it in. That's pretty easy. You can do it in standard form, slope intercept form, or function notation. This is not a star-tested subject, so we're going to use the open-ended Desmos, not the controlled version, so it will graph a standard form function for me. You can enter a table on Desmos. Do we know how to do that? On Desmos, to enter a table, you'd go to the little plus sign in the corner that says add item. So we can write that on our notes. We're going we're gonna to do plus sign, and then we're going to choose table, and it will fill in the X's and the Y's, and it's just waiting for you to type in the numbers from a table. So the same way you would have done stat edit on a calculator, you can do stat edit here on Desmos. We won't use this as much for my class as you might, or definitely will in Algebra 2 if you haven't taken that yet, or in Pre-Cal if you're taking that next. To turn tables or equations on or off, this one's actually really helpful, and you might know how to do this, but just in case you don't, Let's say I have a bunch of equations on my graph and I, I'm overwhelmed and I only want to see one of them. You can select the color part of it and just click it. If that color is gone, the equation is turned off. If the color is on, the equation is turned on. So like, let's say I only wanted to turn one of these off at a time. I could turn the black one off or I could turn the red one off. We know how to do this. Or we see it. It's very intuitive. So for this part, we're just going to take uh, a picture. It's like, it's normally, it starts with red if it's the first one you've written down on your paper. And it kind of looks like this for a line. And then you're just going to turn it off. Click this. That's our notes to ourselves. To turn it off, you click this. To turn it on, you click it again. Uh... The next thing it says, Desmos tells you intersections. Let me make this more interesting. We can see where two lines intersect. Remember, lines intersect at a point. Planes intersect at a line. We learned that last time. So we know that sliders are really cool. If you put uh, like a letter in an equation, it brings up add slider. And you can press play and see what happens as that letter changes. So as it scrolls through from negative 10 to 10, you can watch what the graph does, which is just cool. Again, this is more stuff for algebras. We won't use it as much in geometry, but it's still good to know about. Um, 
To clear any points tables equations from Desmos, you can refresh your page or just press the little X button next to each of them. To zoom in, you're gonna press the plus sign on the graph and to zoom out, you're gonna press the minus. So they're over here, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can just drag and drop. But if you wanted to zoom to home, you would press the home button and it goes to home. That's my, that's my home, it's not great. Oh, you can't even see my bad drawing. Hee <laughs> hee, there's my home. It's kind of crooked. So some other buttons that we just need to know about Desmos. Uh, the three lines in the corner are gonna be where you can save the graph if you are ever saving a graph. The plus sign is where you get to add an item, which is your table, equations. You could add a picture. This is undo. It looks like every other undo button. This would be redo. It looks like every other redo button in the world. Mm, this one is going to be settings for your items. So that's where you could get like copy paste. If you don't want to actually copy paste, or convert to table. So if we go to settings, here are your options. You have delete, copy, or convert to table. Uh, and then this right here, you probably never push, but it, it means hide items. So if you just wanted to see the whole graph with no equations, I don't really know why you would, but if you press that, it just tucks away your equations and you can bring it back. So go away, come back. Okay, one last thing I wanna, I forgot to talk about this earlier and I apologize. Whenever we're graphing on the calculator, so jumping back to the calculator, there are basically three zooms you're gonna use in this class. There's probably another one if you ever take stats you would use. But in this class, if we press zoom, the ones you're gonna use are option two, that's zoom in, option three, that's zoom out, and option six, which is called standard, which we can think of as home. Now, zoom requires that you press zoom, one of those numbers, and then enter. So we have an extra button to press at the end of those to make sure that it goes where we want. All right, that was a whole lot really quickly. And now we just need some time to explore our calculator. So what you're going to do is you're going to do uh, the back of this worksheet. This is where you can put your name. You're gonna keep this, but I wanna come check it off to make sure you're right by the end of class. So I wanted you to keep it because it's kind of like notes and helpful for us, but it is an assignment we need to do. You're gonna write down what buttons you'd use to compute the following and then tell me what the calculator says. So let's do the first one together so I can show you what I mean. If we wanted to type into our home screen of our calculator, three to the fourth. You would press buttons, three, then the up caret, which looks like this, that's how you get into exponent world, and then the number four. If you press in your calculator, three up caret four, what do you get? 81. So you would say three up caret four, and the answer is 81. I want you to do this for all the rest of these. Tell me exactly what buttons you'd press. Now, I've been through this. There are only enough boxes for the buttons you should press. There's no extra. There is perfectly enough. So, you should be able to fill in all of these little boxes and get an answer. Don't work. What doesn't work? Your up caret button? Oh, so type three. Just plain three. Up caret. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then four that's how you get to exponent world yeah let me let me kind of show you i'll do one more with you just because i, I want to make sure we, we kind of figured it out um so for 20 for a square root of 25 do y'all find a square root anywhere on your on your thing right it's above what and what color is it blue so before we press that button we have to press second and then we press the x squared button because it has my square root above it after I do that, what are the two other buttons I press? Two and five, then we press enter. So this is the sort of thing I'm wanting. Second, x squared, because of the square root, 
2, 5, enter will get you what? What is the square root of 25? 5. Okay, can you all work through the rest of this without me? When you've got the whole thing finished, call me over. I'll check it off. Um, and if you get stuck, call me over and I'll help you out. Great question coming up. The third one, I'll do it with you again. These are really great questions. That first one, that first negative sign, is that a negative or a minus? Negative. negative. So we push the negative button. Not the minus button, the negative button. Then we press 4. Now I told you I didn't leave you any extra space because when something is squared, I don't have to use the up caret. There's a shortcut for squaring it. What button is that? The X with the little square on top of it. This button just automatically squares it. If you want a number other than squared, you have to use the up caret and then put the number. But we use squared so often that we're able to just have that button there. Is that okay? Okay. And when we do that, negative 4 squared, what's the answer? Should be negative 16 because it's not 4 times 2, it's 4 times 4. Okay, now I'll stop talking and let you think. Those were great questions.